and welcome to another episode of Motors for the Masses. And today we have two identical bikes, except for one vital ingredient. So let's roll the intro and get cracking. Crack. So in today's lineup, we have the Sim Joymax Z Plus 300 and the Sim Joymax Z Plus 125. So let's compare these two and see how much faster the 300 is. The 300 uses a 278cc liquid-cooled four-stroke engine, developing 25 and a half brake horsepower and 19 and a half pounds foot of torque. Whereas the 125 also uses a four-stroke liquid-cooled engine, which develops an impressive 14 brake horsepower and 8.3 pound foot of torque. However, the 300 does have traction control, and it can be turned off. Both bikes are Euro 5 compliant. And the 300 has a top speed of around 85 miles an hour. And the 125 is about 65. Both bikes use right way up front forks with a 260mm front disc with ABS. And both bikes use a 240mm rear disc also with ABS. Both bikes use a 14 inch alloy front wheel with a 120 Maxxis Pro front tyres. And on the back, both bikes use a 13 inch alloy wheel with a 140 tyre, also Maxxis Pro, obviously. And both bikes have dual rear shocks. Both bikes are just under 2.2 metres long and 750 millimetres wide. And 1.4 metres tall, so they really are both Maxxis scooters. And both bikes have a seat height of 747 millimetres and use a 12 litre fuel tank. But where the 125 has an MPG of 97, the 300 has an MPG of 88. Which one is my line? Yeah, it was in the script as my line. It's my line, obviously, because it comes on from the 300. Double check your script. Oh, yeah, that bit's black. <laughs> I forgot to colour that bit red. Sorry. <laughs> All right, okay, well, what he said. And um, both bikes have a good weight to them. The 125 has 172 kilos. And the 300 is 185 kilos. It's not a lot more, but even though they may sound a little bit weighty, they're not. They're very easy to manoeuvre. They don't feel heavy or cumbersome or awkward in any way whatsoever. Very simple to manoeuvre and very easy to get on the stands. So let's get these out on the road to see what they're really like. Right, so in uh, Motors for the Masses style, I'm not going to start on the 125, I'm going to start on the 300. So here we go. Alright, well, initial thing I have to say is, it pulls away very, very smoothly. I've got no issues with that. It's quite rapid, but it's not instantly rapid, like it's going to rip your arms off and throw you off the back, but it's definitely rapid in a smooth kind of way. Does that make sense? It's very comfortable. 
this is uh, not a uh, long, bumpy road, shall we say, and it absorbs it really nicely. How? Oh, yeah, in the field. Pheasant, crow, tree. Sorry, so what you see. So, yes, very comfortable indeed. Uh, the screen protects me really well. I'm not being buffeted around in any way whatsoever. Um, obviously, I'm only doing 40 miles an hour. Um, I do have to say that the uh, clocks are the wrong way around. The big numbers, kilometres, are on the outside and the miles per hour on the inside. And I do kind of wish that was the other way around. But other than that, it's just a matter of getting used to it. It really does absorb the bumps nicely. Over some little nibbly bits, not an issue whatsoever. Brakes are really responsive. Lovely brakes. Um, you feel some great protection from your legs, uh, from the front end there. And as I say, that screen is adjustable as well. Um, wow. I never thought I'd be impressed with a scooter before, but I am. The indicators are audible as well as uh, touchable. Does that make sense? Yeah. All is uh, easy to hear. Mirrors are great to see out of. I can see a tiny bit of my arm, but mostly road. That's good. See, this is what a lot of people have been missing on a lot of bikes. Mirrors that you can actually see the road on. Because most of it is half arm, half road. So easy to turn around. And go in a 60. Oh, yeah, it's got to get up and go that you need. All the way up to speed, lovely. Um, Drake, bear my is a neat Drake's. Oh, the ABS does its job very well. No problems there. Oh, it's really comfortable. Um, bear in mind, this is brand new tyres that are on as well. Very manoeuvrable. As I say, it may be 185 kilos, but it's so flippable. I can't believe how comfortable it is. Is this really enough to make me want a scooter? If I was um, in the market for a scooter, I wouldn't hesitate. I tell you what I also like as well, when you accelerate, it doesn't throw you off the back. You've got uh, the bump in the seat, which sort of tucks nicely into your lower back and your top of your bum really well. There's no worries there. It's certainly pokey. I love how it's got plenty of punch. And uh, you don't have to worry about whether it's going to propel you up and down here, because uh, it really does. Now I'm going to slow right down here, around this corner, and then I'm going to launch it and see what it does. Now I don't feel like it's got traction control. Um, not that it's going to spin up, but it's got enough power to spin up if it wants to. So I'm going to slow down to a snail's pace. In fact, I'm going to stop, and I'm going to launch it on a little bit of dusty. There you go, this dusty bit here. I'm going to launch it on this dusty bit and see what the traction control does. Oh yes! Oh, did you feel that? You may have heard it. I'll tell you what, here's a better test. Alright, so we're on some gravel. Are you ready? Oh yeah! Did you hear what it did there? It cut the power. It wouldn't let me slip. I mean, it gave me the power when I wanted it. Fantastic. The traction control does its job. Very nice. The dash is very simple to see, very easy to read. The handlebars are very comfortable. Key position's nice. I like that. I'll tell you what I also like about here. Just going to pull in here and talk to you a second about it. Whoa, such good brakes. And they don't lunge you back either. They stop you and then boom, that's it, you're there. This compartment down here, I don't know if you can see that, is where the battery is. So the battery is in this compartment here. Very easy to get to. And on here is your USB and a cubby holder. It really goes quite deep. Fantastic. Now, I'm going to also show you something else I like. 
Let's turn this off for a second. Now in here is where the petrol flap is and uh, that is very easy to get to. I like that. To open it you just turn, no sorry, push in and turn and there is the petrol flap and just turn to the right is the seat or turn to the left is just the seat and under here look it's on a gas ram and it's got a courtesy light in there as well so you can see inside plenty of room in there don't worry about that look at the size of that in there look all kinds of space for all kinds of goodies certainly get a helmet in there and you can get one in the back as well and you're shopping I like that and it's on a gas I love how it's on a gas ram and it's not like the Nico Alex one where it goes up um, to about here and you've got to really squeeze inside There's plenty of room there so what's the seat like to close oh yeah that's closed wow nice I like the design of the indicators here nice ergonomic design it's very well put together it feels unbelievably solid that's one of the things I really like about it. It feels like quality. Even the screen. I mean, it's not a flimsy screen. Look how thick that is. Very nice indeed. Very thick screen. Very well put on. It is adjustable. You can just move it up a couple or down, however you want it. It's on the highest setting at the moment. Um, oh, that's pretty impressive, that. So now it's the turn of the 125, and of course it's not as quick as the 300, but it's pretty spry. Bear in mind a brand new engine, as I say, again, very smooth pull away. It's not jerky, it's not bumpy, very comfortable. The shocks, just like the 300, are doing their job very well. Obviously there's no traction control on here, so I am going to stop just up here and see how it fares. See if it does a nice little uh, skiddy widdy. Yes, I did just say skiddy widdy. Ready? No! And I'll tell you why it doesn't. Because as soon as you open up, you get like half power and then about a second later, full power. Now that's not a problem, because it's like having traction control, it just doesn't cut out. Oh, I like that. As I say again, very comfortable. I have to crack my visor because it's getting all steamed up in here. The vision is very easy to see. Again, the screen does a fantastic job. Now these bikes are exactly the same apart from traction control and a different size engine. Other than that, they do their job really nicely. Again, great visibility out of the mirrors. Very comfortable seat. Very comfortable forgiving suspension even though it's a lighter engine you can feel it's a little bit and I don't, I don't want to say jittery because it's not jittery but it's not as forgiving as the 300 because I think that's to do with the size of the engine whereas the 300 it's got a little bit more to go so it bounces better whereas this is maybe the rebound is a bit quicker not a major problem just more can you expect again the clocks are in kilometres in the big numbers down here look. and then miles per hour on the smaller one thank you Europe it revs nicely, it's quiet there's no horrible noises great visibility very easy to turn the balance is superb So pulling up here again, as I say, not as quick as the uh, 300 of course, but we're up to 50 miles an hour almost already. I don't want to push it too much with a brand new engine. Um, pull on the brakes again, brand new brakes, don't want to give it too much, but yep. Yeah, very easy, very smooth, not jerky, not bitey. It oozes 
quality. Now this bike does have the same gas ram for the seat and the same battery compartment down here and the same USB here. What it doesn't have is the traction control so you've got no button here for that. Easy to see for the uh, fuel here and the heat here, uh, temperature, the heat, <laughs> and a clock in the middle, and then the kilometers down here, which can be changed into miles per hour, of course. A little bit more chuckable than the 300, because obviously it's a little bit lighter by uh, 13 kilos. Uh, once again, the seat is pushing nicely against my back, mind the pheasant. Is there anything I don't like? Um, nothing springs to mind. Ah, the clock. That's the only thing I don't like. It should be the big numbers in miles per hour. I know I get it, it's for Europe, but come on. This is England. Make a clock for England, will you? And Hong Kong? And Japan? engine cutoff switch when you put the side stand down of course and then you've got your kill switch here uh, lights on here very easy to use very good quality they feel nice and solid push in turn to the right fuel cap down there and that just pushes gently shut okay again here seat open undo that and that's where your battery is um, like the 300 you've also got a lock for the uh, key slot uh, so having looked in the seat again gas ram junk sorry but we take that out of there toolkit obviously pointless nobody uses them look at the space in there so much space that's a maxi and a half that is so I say, much better than the Alex one. I do like that. Feels so solid. I love the rails are nice and solid. Everything. Nothing creaks. Nothing feels plasticky. Nothing feels cheap. I love the design of these lights. That front end is really menacing. Look, we're going to scrooge down here. ABS. Love that. Daytime running lights on there, as you saw. Very good quality. Very nice. Everything fits nicely as well. The gaps are nice. Ah, good. What don't I like, apart from the clocks? Um, bearing in mind it's a scooter, I should not like it. And <laughs> It's actually really simple to ride. Even though it's big, it doesn't feel heavy, it doesn't feel weighty feels so simple to throw around everything looks quality as well that fantastic suspension so there we go we are back with those now um what did you think of them i think they're quite nice they're built really nice the design is not unpleasant it's nice looking well built i think they ride really well i was surprised how well they rode to be honest um, they're quick but without being jerky it's very smooth progression and that's what I like about them. Well, not a bit funny, Sim scooters are built quite well. They are, yeah. Sim have never really had an issue with their build quality at all. And I think they've done wonders with this. They look good. They are definitely maxi scooters. I love the under seat space. Plenty of space in them. And seats are comfy as well. That's another thing. And it's, it's good that they put the battery in there. It's so easy to get to rather than being under the seat behind a bracket on top of a banana. It's just, you know, it's not awkward to get to. The screens, very good quality, nice and thick, and they really do deflect the wind nicely. Um, the 125, as I say, is almost like it's got its own level of traction control <laughs> without having traction control, yeah. because for a second, it, doesn't, it gives you half power, and then it gives you full power. As long as you're still not on that gravel when that kicks in, <laughs> it's all right. Yeah, does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, uh, now, price-wise, um, the 125. 4599 on the road. Which is the same as the Royal Alloy TG125. 
Now, funnily enough, the Sim 300 is 5099 on the road. Strangely enough, exactly the same as the Royal Alloy TG300. Strange that, but uh, well priced. Now, bearing in mind they're exactly the same price, given these or the Royal Alloy, what would I have? Mm. Royal Alloy is always to do with the looks, isn't it? Uh, that's why I yeah, buy They do ride really Alloy. well, and with those Vespa engines, they do go well. They do, yeah. How, however, um, for me, a scooter is about practicality. Yeah, fair enough. I'm a, I'm a motorcycle rider. I mean, that's that's what it is. Scooters are practical. Don't get me wrong. They, I haven't they said that people buy the Royal Alloy because of what it represents. Yeah. If you want something for a daily basis, um, that's a good commuter, uh, that's like you say, practical. I think these are superb. Yeah. Um, the only thing I don't like about it is the clocks. The big numbers are in kilometres. And yeah. the small numbers are in miles. Um, I get, okay, fair enough, it's only us and Hong Kong and Japan that have miles per hour. And America. Yeah, that's wrong. <laughs> Forgot about America, that's that big weird place that... Um, we don't need to worry about Americans anyway, do we? That, oh, you can't say that. No? No, we like our American viewers. Big pause. <laughs> big pause for the uh, Lycra. <laughs> yeah, all I saw was this flash of yellow and black lycra, like a bumblebee. I think he's got a hood on. Has he? <laughs> it's just like a bumblebee. It's just more annoying. <laughs> bumblebee, you can just let him get on with it, whereas cyclists, it's like, no, get off, get off. <laughs> anyway, sorry if you're a cyclist, but yeah. never mind. Sorry if you're American. <laughs> just sorry in general. <laughs> Is there anything you don't like about them? No, not really. Um, they are the ex more expensive side of the budget for what they are, but yeah. however, they are built a lot nicer than the cheaper ones. So you pay for what you get, uh, and that's what it is, I think. Yeah, um, colour-wise, you've got this grey, you've got this blue, they do it in a white and black as well. Um, I like this blue, it's a matte sort of grey-blue, is what it's called, actually. Um, this is a gloss grey which when it first came out on cars, I hated this primer looking color. But the way they do it in this gloss color actually looks really nice. I do like the color. Yeah, well, it's not too full on, is it? You've got a lot of, you know, matte stuff breaking it up, haven't you? It's not too, like if that whole thing was gray, it would just look terrible, wouldn't it? But yeah, it would, yeah. However, I like the blue. Yeah, I think the blue is the best color. It's just unfortunately, matte paintwork does mark quicker than gloss paintwork. So please let us know in the comment section below what you think of them. Do you have one already? Bearing in mind they've only just arrived. Um, do you want one? If you do, pop along to the links below for Lightning Storm motorcycles and see if you can order yourself one. Uh, there's two here. And more available. If not, let us know what you don't like about them and why you don't like them. Um, if you've got anything else to say, please let, leave that in the comment section below. And that brings us to the end of this episode of Motors for the Masses. Thank you very much for joining us. We'll be back next time with more bikes and more cars and more projects. Um, the track car project may be taking a right-hand turn. <laughs> right-hand turn into uh, no entry yeah. street. Oh, Cul-de-sac. Up a ramp into a skip. <laughs> Um, I'll be booking another track day as well, so that's coming up also. And what else have we got? We've got some more bikes coming, also some new stuff coming through once again. At last, lockdown is very close to the end. Although you've probably given up already and either moved to Mars or um, just put up with it. Anyway, <laughs> sorry, that brings us to the end of this episode. Of this. Until next time, please ride and drive carefully. But have fun. Bye. Bye. Right, which one are you riding home? <laughs> I'll take the van, you ride these. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, oh, skates. <laughs> <laughs>